Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is just going to be an update on my 8088 motherboard project. Um, the main takeaway today is going to be the speaker fix, but I do want to talk about the, the project here in the case, and then I'll do some demos on the speaker and explain the speaker. So as you can see, it's here in an ATX case. Uh, I don't know if I've really ever showed this much. Uh, I've always checked to make sure it fit, but as you can see, here it is in the case. Um, now, you're going to need... I pretty much only make the 7-slot board anymore. It seems to be the most in high demand. So you're going to need a 7-slot case for your project. Uh, I do have the 4-slot boards around, but so many people want the extra ISA cards. Um, as you can see, it doesn't take up like the area where like a modern board would go and mainly it's here because it needs the ISA slots. They do make a faceplate that's blank that we can put in here and you can just punch a hole for your keyboard controller. I've never done that, but I have seen the blank ones for sale. Uh, power supply, I've seen them in case on this end or that end, it doesn't seem to matter as long as your cord reaches. Hopefully this location for the cord is appropriate for most people. I, I'm sure they probably make an extension cord if your cords aren't long enough. Uh, this one doesn't have any drives, but you could put your drives... Well, I don't even know if this... Oh, this case has got some spaces for some sort of drives. So you could put your drives in there. I honestly don't uh, really need floppy drives. I played with them a little bit just to see if they worked. But I, I don't use them for this at all. I've got just some dummy face plates there covering up those slots. Um, the six screws, they all line up good. There's a little bit of play. Um, when I put this in, I didn't really pull it one way or the other. I just kind of just screwed it down in place. So it's just kind of centered and it seemed to be decent enough spacing. So these are my cards here for the processor and the RAM. And these are factory cards and they all seem to fit just fine you know there may be it may be off by just a tiny bit you know a few millimeter a few thousand well partial millimeters i should say uh one way or the other uh that maybe over time can be cleaned up but so far this seems to fit just fine uh this particular board uh this is an actual 8088 it's a dash 2 so it'll run at 8 megahertz um I like this one because it is an 8088, but the V40 still works fine. The V20 uh, works fine as well. Uh, I am running the latest BIOS on this one. And the latest BIOS will actually detect between an 8088 and a uh, V40 so that uh, you're not running that 186 code. And it seems to be a pretty decent BIOS. I have had a little issues with the uh, V20. Um, so I've, a lot of my V20 boards, I, uh, use an older version of the BIOS. I don't know if it's a timing issue or what, but it just doesn't quite, it doesn't get past the USB drive too well sometimes. So let's talk about the speaker. That's something I really want to hit heavy today. So I've got some blank boards here just to show. Port 61 has been the issue, so it's got to be read-write, not just a write. Um. So port 61 is here between the ISA slots and the keyboard controller. And what I've done is I've added a, a second chip here. So it's just a latch for the port 61, so you latch values out to it. And these are what set up your speaker and your channel check. Nothing else on port 61 is used. Now the reason why the keyboard... So the keyboard controller is very much related to 61. And that's where the issue has been coming up, is when you push a key, it wants to know the value of 61 because one of these pins, I don't know right off the top of my head, actually would disable the keyboard port while it did the keyboard, uh, handled the keyboard routine. And then so what it does is it reads the value, sets the keyboard port to, uh, to turn off the keyboard port, and then it restores the value. So without the read, it's just getting a bogus value when it would read, whatever was like on the data bus by, you know, just whatever. And it depended on the PCs, but it was always seemed like it was the same value, but. 
So we added the read write uh, that's just a transceiver, and then I added a extra decoding down here to help decode for the transceiver for the read write. And that seems to fix everything on the speaker. Um, these will be available soon. This is my prototype. <laughs> Actually, when I added uh, this chip here, I missed one trace to put the five volt to there. So I just had to put a little piece of uh, wire in there to jump them together. So I'll make some that are actually like complete so that they could be built uh, without no having that knowledge. So anyway, I'm gonna pause the video here and we'll get it set up and uh, I'll show a demo of it uh, with the keyboard or the, sorry, the speaker working correctly. I got it all connected together now. Just plugged it in. So this one doesn't have an external power switch. So I just lock the power button down and uh, you just plug it in and it boots up. So we're starting MS-DOS. Hopefully this comes across clean enough. Uh, I did buy some screen capture hardware, VGA in to like HDMI, hoping to get better videos. And so far I haven't had any good luck with the uh, screen capture hardware. So uh, booted it up using MS-DOS here. Um, I usually send my boards out with uh, FreeDOS on them, but if you can get MS-DOS, I'd recommend using that over FreeDOS. It just seems to work better. Um, the network card on here, I've just rammed it out in the auto exec, so just I don't have it plugged in, but the network card is in there and it works. So let's uh, let's demo the speaker. So games are where you're going to get your most speaker. So uh, Sop with was one of the games that in the past you would have right here you would have no sound and if you push sound like that push S for sound as soon as you hit a key the sound would turn off and that had to do with that read write but as you can see we've got the full sound and there's no issues with it so let's exit this one I'll show um, another game so let's go digger now digger was one that the sound would sometimes work on and uh, sometimes not uh, sometimes I'd get the full music like this but the majority of the time you wouldn't get the music but you would get you would get the emeralds that sound there and then when you would die you wouldn't get the uh, the death music there and so that's that's a good correction there um, I don't really want to spend too much time playing this but when you get the cherry um, the cherry music wouldn't play and now it does so let's uh let's restart it and I'll show you one more game Okay, we're all restarted. Um, so here's Paratrooper. Before, you wouldn't get, like, the, if you pushed a key, that music would stop. And we've got the helicopter sound. We have the little bullet sound. And before, we were not, it was pretty much just silent. Now, one note is my BIOS that I was working on, which I haven't worked on in a while. The sound worked, but that was because my keyboard handler didn't manipulate port 61. Um, so anyway, that's uh, kind of a demo on how the, the speaker's working correctly now. So if you have any uh, questions, email me, leave a comment. And then, like I said, I'll put these, these will be 
any boards that I sell from now on will be cr with the correct uh, the corrected speaker fix. So thanks for checking out the video today.